All right, so let's continue learning how to uh, graph quadratic equations and specifically finding their vertex and their solutions and looking at their graphs. Now we're gonna start with vertex form first. As you can see, these are in vertex form because we can see the parentheses. So if it's in vertex form, the advantages with that is that you can easily shift to find your vertex. Like in this case, there's a minus four on the inside. So I know this is going right four and a positive six on the outside means up six. So if I go right four up six, it gets me about right here. And then there's my vertex at four, six. Now to draw the picture, cause I need the graph in order to be able to tell where the solutions are. Cause that says where the parabola hits the X axis. So I need my parabola. I need to use my slope next to grab the next two points and then use the reflections to um, graph the full parabola. So my slope here is the number in front of X and this says, let me grab my pen here, negative one over two. So here's the thing, when you're doing a quadratic equation, you wanna change the slope, if it's a fraction, to a decimal. So that would be negative 0.5, and the reason why you wanna change it to a decimal so, so that you can change the run as one. So you can change the denominator to a one. So what that means is now you're able to go one unit to the side and one, so one unit to the right and one unit to the left. Now 0.5 is about a half a unit and this half a unit is negative. So we're gonna be going down. So I'm gonna go down about a half a unit and then over one. So that would be right here. And if I connect the dots, I'm shooting downward. So I can see my vertex is going to be a maximum. If I were to use the axis of symmetry here, here's my middle, that x equals four. If I were to reflect, I would be going down half and then over to the right one unit. And so this one's kind of hard to tell where my solutions hit, but I think this is about two, positive two and six. So I get x equals positive two and x equals six is where it hits on the x-axis, at least for me. Now yours might be fairly close to mine, but not quite exact and that is okay. So that is my graph and the vertex and the solution. Let's move on to B here. So B is also a fraction for the slope, but let's start with the vertex. So we have a positive three and a negative two. So a positive three on the inside means left three down two. So if I were to go left three down two, it would be right here at negative three, negative two. And then if I were to use my slope, my slope is negative two thirds, which as a decimal, that's about 0 0.66. And so I wanna change it to a decimal so I can put the run as one. Now this is a positive 0.66, so, or positive two thirds. So I'm gonna go up two thirds, which would be about right here and over one and plot. So about 0.6 up, it's about right there. And then I'm going to connect the dots. And so I would have to also go 0.6 up and to the left to reflect. You can also draw a line of symmetry if that helps you. You don't have to here, but it's good practice. So our line of symmetry is at negative three. Connect the dots. And then I have my U shape. So for this one here, it looks like my solution is hitting at negative 4.5. So X could equal negative 4.5. And then this right here is between negative two and negative one. So we can say negative 1.5. And that is it for this problem. We have found the solution. So there are two solutions here as well. So for this next problem, it's in standard form. And standard form, it's not as simple as doing your shifts to find out where the vertex is. Instead, you have to use a formula 
where you're finding the x value first for the vertex, which is this formula, negative b over 2a. And you have to use this formula instead of figure out shift because there are no parentheses in standard form to tell you if it's going right or left. So we have to use the coefficients that are in front of our x's. And so for our a, we have a 1. For our b, we have a positive 4, and our c is a negative 3. So using this formula, I'm going to plug in my b, which is a 4, so I have a negative 4 on top. My a value is a 1, so I have negative 4 divided by 2, which is negative 2 for my x value. So I know my vertex is at negative 2. To find my y value, I have to plug in my x value in for each x and then find my y. So this is going to be negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2 minus 3. So that would be 4 minus 8 minus 3. So negative 2 squared gives me positive 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 and negative 3 comes down. If I subtract left to right, I get a negative 4 minus 3 and that becomes negative 7. So it looks like my vertex is really far down. It's at negative 2 down 7. So I have to extend this just a tiny bit. So right about here is my vertex. And then the nice part about standard form is that the C value is your y-intercept. So I know that my y-intercept is going to be at um, negative 3 on the y-axis because this is a negative 3. So I can use that as my point of reflection. So if I were to connect the dots, this would be going up from the vertex. So this is my vertex. And I can use a line of symmetry to help guide and reflect the other point. So my line of symmetry is at negative 2. If this is about 2 units away from the vertex or the line of symmetry, I need to go 2 units to the left. So that would be right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and plot. Let me do that because that looks like a, a V. That looks a little bit better. So I have my parabola graphed. I need to find the solution. So that's where it crosses the x-axis. So it looks like it crosses right there and there. So I could say x is equal to, that looks like 0.5, about a half. So 0 0.5. And that point right there looks like negative 4.5. And we have two solutions here. Our last one here has a negative 2 in front for our a. Our b is a negative 8 and our c is a 5. So again, we're going to need to find the vertex here, which is negative b over 2a that I have to plug in. So my b value is a negative 8. So there's two negatives on top. And my a value is a positive 2. So this would be positive 8 divided by 4 if I multiply out the 2 in the bottom. And so if I divide, I get a 2. So my x value for the vertex is a 2. If I plug this 2 in for x, this would give me, let's see, 2 squared minus 8, 2 plus 5. Well, we have to follow order of operation, so exponent will have to come first. So 2 squared is 4. 2 times 8 is going to give me 16 in the middle, and 5 just comes down. So 2 times 4 is 8, minus 16 is going to give me negative 8, plus 5 is negative 3. So my vertex for my y value is a negative 3. So I have to, I have to go over 2 and down 3. So here is my vertex. Now I need my y-intercept would be great to use here. So notice that when I'm using standard form, I'm not using a slope. In fact, there is no slope here for standard form. Do not use the two that's in front. Um, in this case, you are going to need to use the uh, y-intercept to be able to reflect. So this is the y-intercept at 5. So if I go to my y-axis, I plot it at 5. All right, I'm going to try to connect the dots as best as I can. And if I use my line of symmetry to help reflect, so my line of symmetry would be right here at 
x equals 2, we can see it's about 2 units away from the line of symmetry, so I need to go 2 units to the left to help reflect to get my third point. And there we go. So we have our parabola. Now we can see where it crosses the x-axis. So it crosses it at positive 1 for me and positive 3. So I have two solutions, 1 and 3 for x. And that's it, guys. I hope you found this helpful. Bye.